It's our final day in Iceland, and probably our longest one too as we head around the south coast. We've just made our fuel stop here in the nearby town, just outside Reykjavik. We're going to be doing the south coast today, so we're going to make our first stop at Sajalandsfoss in about an hour. Weather started off okay, then it peed it down, and it looks like it's clearing ahead, so that's good. We have arrived at Sajalandsfoss. It is... I wouldn't say it's raining, it's a little bit of moisture in the air but enough that, that really fine rain that really gets you wet so that's why I'm all hooded up. Yeah, the thing I said about not raining so much, mm -mm. It's starting to rain now. <laughs> um, I don't know how much I can film on this camera now before I have to stop so I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit, it's all about the shot. The origin of this waterfall comes from the volcanic glacier of Eyjafjallajökull. Yes, the one that shut down European airspace in 2010. With a drop of 60 meters, this waterfall has 360 degree views from a path that takes you around the back of the waterfall for a unique perspective. After clambering round to the other side of the falls, we made our way back to the car for our next point of interest, Skorfoss Waterfall. So we're at Skorfoss. Um, it seems we every time we arrive at a place, it's okay, and then it starts raining. So then the rain starting to follow us around the island. John, Nat and Tony have climbed up the stairs here to the top where they'll get a nice view of the, the waterfall from up there but I've been up there before and my feet are killing me as you can imagine so I'm sticking with the low view which I think is the best view anyway because you get to be so close to it and almost underneath it I mean there's nothing really stopping you from walking right up to it you can see like the spray and, and just really get a sense of scale when you're that close to this roaring part of nature One of the most searched things on YouTube for Iceland, I suppose, is when is the best time to go? I've been in the middle of winter in January, I've been in September, I've been in November, I've been in April, and I've been in August. <laughs> I can honestly say, April is my advice. It's a lot drier, it's a lot more, it's a lot warmer, and you know, spring's coming, it's beautiful weather, and everything's open. The problem with August is that you think it's going to be a peak of summer, but it's not. You're on the cusp of autumn, which means rainfall. Wet. <laughs> we embark further on our journey across rugged landscapes to our next point of interest. Our next stop is at this wonderful canyon whose name I cannot pronounce uh, but this is a wonderful place to go and come and visit. Um, last time I was here it was dry and sunny. <laughs> Raining looks quite dramatic. Oh my days. The canyon dates back two million years to the last ice age and has been eroded by the river ever since to form this gorgeous canyon that stretches two kilometers and up to a hundred meters deep. I think this is the video that Dan wanted, wasn't it?
<laughs> you practically made it. So I'm sat back in the car now. Um, the guys carried on a lot further up the hill. My feet, as much as I want to go up there, um, yeah, I think I did in as much as I could. I mean, it's, the, the view probably won't change all that much. So I'm kind of satisfied with what I went to go and see. The next stop is the Glacier Lagoon. Um, this is the last stop of the trip that's you know, worth seeing. Obviously, we've still got to go in and have something to eat and things, but this is really the last kind of point of interest for the journey. The stuff that we've done on this trip, you'd really want to do over a week, not in four days. It's hard. I mean, if, you, if your feet are knackered, you're kind of screwed because everything you want to go and see here, you do have to walk to and... But, you know, that's the cost of the trip, isn't it? You, you've got a limited amount of time. You want to maximise what you do, so... A lot of planning went into this trip. I think I can see Tony actually. So Tony, when you watch this back, you've got such a distinct walk. I can see you a mile away. I think that's Tony. Yeah. Continuing our journey east along the south coast, we cross mossy lava fields black sandy beaches tainted by volcanic ash from previous eruptions, and get our first glimpse of the Vatnajökull Glacier. Whilst this is a stunning piece of nature, Unfortunately, due to the impacts of global warming, this has receded at an alarming exponential rate in recent years. And here we are at our final destination, the Glacier Lagoon. With the lagoon being situated close to the sea, underlying currents are continually shaping the ice due to fluctuating temperatures and ice colliding off each other. The black marks within the ice is volcanic ash that's been compacted down and layered with fresh snow over time. So we are here at the Glacier Lagoon. The sun has finally decided to come out after a whole day of raining and not raining and raining and not raining. It's finally starting to break through. So yeah, we're just gonna probably get to the Diamond Beach shortly and then head back to the hotel. Got a five and a half hour drive, which isn't the best, but there you go. Probably stop up at Vic as well. We're gonna have some dinner there because otherwise it can be too late to eat by the time we get back to Lake Vic. Yeah, by the time we get back tonight, it's going to be probably pretty late after half 10, 11 o'clock. We've got to pack. And then tomorrow we have the airport run at 3, 3 or half 3 or something. So the three, we've had four days here and we've had so many early get-ups, so many late nights. Um, I'm amazed if we get to function tomorrow. This trip has been intense for sure, but has been totally worth it. Iceland offers so much to see and do, and with so much escapism on offer, is why Iceland 
will always be special to me.